Hi everyone, welcome to today's class. Today we're gonna see asset liability management in banks unit three. Under this, the first one is measuring and monitoring risk. So what is measuring and monitoring? Without measuring and monitoring, we can't find out the risk which which it is having. Okay. So effective financial risk management will need identification of measurement monitor of market. It may be credit or liquidity risk. For effective financial risk management, we need. Then the needs for the man monitoring risk means it it is the identification of all financial risk in the portfolio and across the institutions. It is the first one. The second one is accurate measurements of different financial risk. Uh, they will after the measurement one day they they will they can if I sorry. After the measurement only, they can find the measurement value accurately. So it is based on different financial risk. The third one is timely monitoring com communication of financial risk. They they will they have to monitor the risk, which in which is how to in separate time. It's a timely monitoring. After that only they they can communication the financial risk. The fourth one is. Timely communication of a risk undertaken in portfolio, so the potential problems can be mitigated. Mitigated means it it can be reduced. Okay, so it is a communication of a risk undertaken in the portfolio, so the potential problems can be mitigated. And the second one is risk scenario. Under this risk scenario, what we gonna see is it is an important concept within a qualitative risk of assessment so it means the use of a list example generic generic risk scenarios to define an initial set of concrete risk scenarios for the organization so mainly the scenario mainly known as the risk scenario is an important concept with qualitative risk so once the risk assessment team has identified and collated all of the relevant information to be used during this risk assessment is the assessment itself start by identifying the risk scenario to be considered so it is chosen by reviewing the potential incidents that could occur within the work scope situation selecting one at the time for consideration during the assessment so as such the risk scenario can be considered to be an incident so typically this assessment should begin by selecting risk scenario which are at the upper end of scenarios should they occur but that remain within the realms of creditability it is mainly incidents which are simply beyond the realms of creditability creditability should not be selected for assessment so this is the risk scenario it is typical risk scenarios include falls fires shocks spills collapse entrap exposure collusion sorry collusion and cuts Okay, these are the risk scenarios. It's a typical risk scenarios. So under this importance, the first importance is to perform validation against the business objectives of the organization. Before that, they need to perform the validation against the business objectives of the organization. So this is the first importance. The second one is refine the selected scenarios based on the validation. How the validation will be. they will categorize them into a level in line within the critically of the organization uh, first first they need to perform after that refine third one reduce the number of scenarios how much scenarios it is it has to be so they have to reduce the number of scenarios and finally keep all the risk in the list so they can be re evaluated in the next iteration included for detail analysis if they have become relevant at time of okay at the time of relevant so this is under risk scenarios and finally which include unspecified event in the scenarios to address incidents that are not covered by the specified scenarios which is not covered by the specified scenarios these are under risk scenarios so under this we going to see risk factors what are the risk factors they are having it means environment factors under environment factors it is an internal and external and after the capabilities what are the capability capabilities it it has having okay 
we need to find the first one it management capabilities and second one it capabilities these are the capabilities which they are having so these are the risk factors they are following so the first risk factor is mainly known as environmental factors these factors that in influence the frequency and business input impact of a risk scenarios so they can be different nature can be classified into two major categories under this environment there is a two the first one is internal second one is external so and uh, under this environment factors mean it has a internal and external it is a difference being degree of control and enterprise has over them so it is a internal and external under internal factors this is a large extent under the control of the enterprise under external it is a large extent outside the control of enterprise so internal means under the control external means outside the control so under capabilities this is two it management capabilities and it capabilities so which means a capabilities how could the enterprise is a number of it related activities it is a it related activities means it capabilities so they can be distinguished in a line with isaca three major framework it has a framework of three the first one is it risk management capabilities it is a it risk management capabilities though which has to what extent the enterprise is mature in performing the risk management process defined in the risk of it so the second one is it capabilities which means how good the it process are as defined in covid okay then it related business capabilities means value management it is expressed through the wall val it processes so these are the sorry for the disturbance so these are the factors under risk scenario and the next one we going to see is components of risk scenarios the components which having means it is a it risk scenario is described of an it related event that can lead to a business impact when and if it is should occur so the risk scenario is to be complete and usable for the risk purpose they should contain certain components the first one is scenario development so under this the use of scenarios is a key to risk management and the technique is applicable to the any enterprises so each enterprise needs to build a set of scenarios means containing the components described previously so as the starting point to conduct its risk analysis building a scenario means that each possible value of every component is combined so each combination should then should then be assessed for relevant and realism and it found to be relevant so entered into a risk register in practice this is of course not possible because it would result in for too large a number of scenarios the number of scenarios to be developed and analysis should be kept too much smaller number of remain manageable so since every possible combination cannot be retained this is the use use of risk scenario analysis sorry uh, this is the scenario development and the use of scenario analysis is means how the analysis of risk they are using the organization or a management using this is means the use of scenario analysis so it analyze often considered to be complex technical method which are under mathematical computation so these are the technical method this unfortunate reputation is probably related to its financial institution for capital allocations okay the first of all let's agree on what i mean by scenario in the context so a section succession of a events means a risk that lead to a wider impact in a scope of then their individual occurrence so an example for a scenario would be simulation of the outcome of damaged infrastructure and assets okay should this even occur it would it could trigger associate risk etc employee safety leading a physical injuries because it it is not a it it has a damaged infrastructure okay so the if the infrastructure has damaged the employee will suffer in a physical injuries unplanned service interruption leading the disruption in the supply chain so such a scenario would enable 
the underestimate of the potential impacts of maintenance or regular verifications were not carried out adequately on the infrastructure so many intentions can be pursued when creating the scenario means under this the first one understanding the chain of events and identifying root causes how it, it is understanding so a risk owner might not be aware of the reach of the risk breaking silence to give an enterprise view of a risk one intention of scenario analysis to give an enterprise view of risk to uncover help the root causes of the risk an isolated event like an increase in river flow so could lead to flow flooding of a production facility loaded in its shore hence a distribute disruption in the supply chain and the second one is adopting an effective mitigation strategy mitigation means it is a way of removing way of reducing okay so once the root causes and underlying risk are identified they have to appropriate the response strategy it can be defined as a causes okay in that it, they have to reduce their reduce means mitigate mitigate okay reduce maintenance on the asset to prevent issues so reduce their potential impact in our second example so this can be also helped in deciding what type of insurance an associated convergence level could be purchased of course these scenarios are subjective as they are for any such research as assessment exercise and the total expected loss should not be the only guide to determine your insurance requirements but it can be very useful criterion for insurance more specifically understanding the full potential risk exposure can help ensure that the company is not overcovering or undercovering so its risk rather purchasing the risk level of coverage and therefore optimizing its insurance policies so monitor carlo simulation that generally generates best and worst case scenarios is the perfect tool for this purpose as it provides the relevant data points for decision making and the third one is optimize audit and compliance efforts so which means for compliances preventative controls are a fantastic monitoring tool so it apply to the root causes they can help notify the relevant stakeholders in a timely manner so its based auditing is more and more widely applied with the help of scenarios audit teams can focus their efforts on ensuring the underlying risk or mitigated means reduce okay so not just a focus of a most visible tip of the iceberg similarly for compliance preventive controls are a fantastic monitoring tool apply to the root causes they can help notify relevant stakeholders in the timely manner so this is the scenarios under this the scenario have three benefits okay the three scenario has three benefits the first one is scenarios expand one one's thinking so how it will expand people will think more broadly if they develop a range of possible outcomes by demonstrating how why things could, could quickly become better or worst so they increase the readiness for the range of possibilities the future may hold and then second one is scenarios uncover inevitable or near inevitable futures so in developing scenario people will search for predetermined outcomes particularly unexpected outcomes which are often the most powerful source of a new insight uncovered in the scenario development process and finally the scenario protect against group think so often the hierarchy of an organization inhibits the free flow of debate so employees will wait especially in meetings for the most senior executive to state an opinion before venturing their own which then often magically mirrors that of the senior persons so this scenario allow the organization to break out this trap by providing the political safe haven so this will not provide an all answers but they help executive ask better questions and prepare for the unexpected so that makes them very valuable to indeed okay so the next one we going to see is interest rate sensitivity okay interest rate sensitivity so which the meaning the meaning for interest rate sensitivity is it is a measure of how much the price of fixed income asset will fluctuate as a result of changes in the interest rate environment 
so the securities that are more sensitive have greater price fluctuations than those with less sensitivity so this type of sensitivity must be taken into account when selecting the bond or other fixed income instruments the investors may sell the secondary markets okay so by this the interest sensitivity means the interest sensitivity is how much a fixed income asset price moves with changes in the interest rates this is the first one the second one is interest rate and fixed income assets prices are inversely correlated correlated means it's a mixed okay the fixed rates and fixed sorry fixed income and interest rates and the more interest or rate sensitivity means asset price fluctuates more with the change in interest markets and then the longer the maturity of the asset the more sensitive the asset to changes in interest rates and we're going to see how interest rate sensitivity works okay how it will work we're going to see so by this we're going to see fixed income securities and interest rate are inversely correlated so therefore as interest rate rise prices of fixed income securities tend to fall when apply to calculate fixed income securities interest rate sensitivity is known as assets duration so this is the one way to determine how investment rate affect a fixed income security portfolio so the higher bond or a bond fund duration the more sensitive the bond bond fund changes in the interest rate actually the duration of fixed income securities gives investors an idea okay of sensitivity to potential interest rates so duration is the good measure of interest rate sensitivity because the calculation includes multiple bond characteristics such as coupon pa payments and maturity coupon payments and maturity generally the longer the maturity of the asset is the more sensitive the asset changes in the interest rate so changes in interest rate are watched closely by bond and fixed income traders as a result price fluctuations affect all over the immunizations their fixed income portfolios in the short term interest rates the next we going to see is types of interest rate sensitivity so under the types it has four widely duration okay the four widely du duration which determine a fixed income in a security rate sensitivity so under this it is a modified duration the first one is mccallay duration which is which means modified duration effective duration and key rate duration it is mainly to calculate certain merits must known as time to maturity remaining cash flows required yield cash flow payments per value and bond price so this is the mccallay duration and next one is modified duration it is a modified calculation of a mccallay duration that incorporate yield to maturity ytm okay so it determines how much the duration would change for each percentage point change in the yield those so the effective duration is to use to calculate the duration of bonds with embedded options so it determines the appropriate price decline for a bond if interest rate rise instantaneously by 1 percentage so the key rate duration determines a fixed income security or fixed income portfolio duration at the specific maturity on the yield curve so this is the types of interest rate sensitivity and the next which going to see is examples of interest rate sensitivity so example is one widely used measures to determine interest rate sensitivity is the effective duration for each okay to assume bond mutual funds holds a, for example there are 100 bonds with an average duration 9 years okay an average effective duration was 11 years if interest rate in increases 1 percentage the bond fund is expected to lose 11 percentage of its value based on its eff effective duration so likewise a trader can look at a particular corporate bond with a maturity of 6 months and duration was 2.5 
if interest rate falls 0.5 percentage means a trader can expect that the bond price to rise by 1.25 so this is the example of interest rate sensitivity and then next we're gonna see under this measurement and management of interest rate how they will measure so interest rate risk is regarded as one of the major financial risk that commercial banks pack so therefore interest rate risk management plays an important role in a commercial bank specifically the measurement of an interest rate is priority in interest rate risk so the regular measurement could enable commercial banks to estimate the influence caused by interest rate changes in the timely way so that to adjust a commercial bank structure of an assets and liabilities and increase their net incomes and net assets these are the measurement and management so next which we're going to see is interest rate sensitivity gap analysis okay so gap analysis what is gap analysis so gap analysis we already seen in a first unit so second unit sorry so the interest rate sensitivity gap analysis means two two equations one of the interest rate gap okay and other for the interest rate sensitivity one for a gap uh, second for a sensitivity the first one is irsg means interest rate okay interest rate sensitivity g g means gap interest rate sensitivity gap equal to interest rate sensitivity analyze analyze minus asset sorry interest rate sensitivity assets minus interest rate sensitivity liabilities equal to sasl sensitivity asset sensitivity liabilities so this is the gap and the second one is sensitivity rate the same thing divided by asset by liabilities i i i r s g means gap okay for the gap and also sensitivity rate for the sensitivity sorry for the interest rate sensitivity gap is the first formula asset minus liabilities the same thing for gap 2 and then second one is asset divided by liability same thing asset divided by liability so both in the terms of the interest rates assets are interest rate sensitivity liabilities the first equation leads to measuring an absolute amount if you don't if you can't able to mean that means you can refer from the from your uh, material which i have given okay this is under interest rate sensitivity gap analysis equations and the next we're going to see principles of interest rate sensitivity gap management so how the principles will be okay we have to find so both interest rate sensitivity gap and interest rate sensitivity rate can be used measure interest rate risk so furthermore they are complementary so that is to say when the interest rate sensitivity gap is positive the interest rate sensitivity rate is definitely larger than one so on the other hand it is sensitivity gap shown how much the difference can be so thus when commercial banks manage their interest on a risk both measures are useful for the organizations okay so one can write the next interest income changes means niic okay as the weighted different questions so in terms of interest rate sensitivity it has a formula means net interest income changes equal to interest rate sensitivity asset into airc what is airc which means assets interest rate changes into sorry asset interest rate changes minus in interest you can check from the material interest rate sensitivity liabilities into liabilities interest rate changes these are the formula so thus if banks face similar assets and liabilities interest rate changes the one encountering the largest risk is when its absolute value of interest rate sensitivity gap is the greatest so when the interest rate forecastingly fund trend interest rate means they will work under this interest rate income to to the point of becoming larger than then amplified okay the bank should keep the interest rate sensitivity gap in the negative realm so then the re reduced range of interest rate income would be less than than interest rate expenditure 
so when the bank would increase their net interest rate income as well so this is the these are the principles of interest rate sensitivity under this interest rate risk means the rate which which is arising under interest so which means it is the risk that current anticipated in earnings and a capital arising from the moments in interest rate so interest rate is a potential create adverse effects on the books so one of the fundamental objectives in a banking to borrow funds at the lower rate is lend them higher rate so this is the first one and basis risk which means it is a different assets and liabilities of balance sheet items so may change the different magnitudes so this degree of basis risk is fairly high in banks that create composite assets third one embedded option risk so which means a result from a significant changes in the market interest rates that affect banks profitability by encouraging payments of cash credit demand loans terms etc and then next one is yield curve risk which means a risk arises from changes in the shape of the yield curve so banks base their assets and liabilities prices on different benchmarks including treasury bills fixed deposit call money markets when bank use two different instruments that mature at a different times for the pricing their assets and liabilities any non parallel movements in the yield curve with affect net interest margin so the fluctuation in the yield curve are more frequent when the economy moves through business cycle so bank should examine the impact of yield curve functions on the portfolio value and operating income so these risk cover adverse effect on a bank's income and underlying economic value resulting from unanticipated shift in the yield curve next one is price risk the scenario of the price risk arises when the asset sold before the stipulated maturity period so in financial terminology bond prices yields are inversely related the price risk occurs when assets are sold before the stated maturities the risk is closely associated with short term moments in the interest rate hence the banks that have active trading books have to focus on formulating policies to restrict portfolio size holding period duration stop loss limits and marketing the market and the next one reinvestment how they will investment by investing the reinvestment uncertainty the interest rate at the future cash flows could be reinvested and the next one net interest position risk so which means one of the significant factors profitability of banks in the size of non paying liabilities so we, in other words banks with a positive net interest position will experience redu reduction in the net worth banks with a positive net means as a result market interest rate declines and decreases when the interest rate will rises okay these are the principles and finally how interest rate scenario work we going to see how it it works it's nothing it is a downward trend the interest rate risk is higher for a banks that have a more earning assets will experience reductions in the net interest income so these are the measurement of interest risk so based on this it will work under the scenario by this we'll finish this class now In the next video we're going to see in next class thank you all